I'm Anil Kumar and let me first thank my subscriber Ellen for asking me to solve such a beautiful question on rational functions. While this question is complete in itself, it has all the components of rational functions which you should understand. The question here is, consider f of x equals to x cubed plus 2x square minus 8x divided by x square minus 4. State zeros, y-intercepts, asymptotes, end behavior, and then graph the function. So let's go through them one by one. So the function here is, let me write it down, f of x equals to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x over x squared minus 4. Now to understand any rational function which is having numerator and denominator as polynomials, we should analyze the polynomials individually. The denominator should not be zero. If it is zero, it leads to vertical asymptote or a hole. It will give you a hole if we have a common factor in numerator and denominator and a vertical asymptote if we do not have a common factor in numerator and denominator. So let's factor this first, right? So if I factor, I can factor x from the numerator, which gives me x squared plus 2x minus 8 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 2. Further, we can factor the quadratic part, which is x times minus 8. We need product sum as 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. We can use x plus 4 times x minus 2, correct? divided by x plus 4 times x minus 2. So that is the factored form of the given polynomial. As you can clearly see, we have a common factor in numerator and denominator, right? Which is x minus 2. That means we have a whole at x equals to 2 and x plus 2 will give rise to a vertical asymptote, right? So we have vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 2, right? Now, let's look into the zeros of this rational functions. Zeros will be at when the numerator is 0, right? Numerator will be 0 for x equals to 0 and for x equals to minus 4. So these are the two zeros, okay? In the question we have put zeros first. And now let's so see what is the y-intercept. y-intercept is the value of the function when x is 0. So if I substitute x equals to 0 here, then we have 0 in the numerator, and therefore we get this as equal to 0. So y-intercept is 0. Now we need to analyze asymptotes and and behavior. Now, one of the asymptotes, which is the vertical asymptotes, I've already discussed with you. And behavior is the behavior of the function as x approaches positive infinity or x, x approaches negative infinity, right? So that is our end behavior, right? Okay. So this part we are doing n behavior. And then we'll sketch the graph of the function. Now, as you can see, let us analyze this function further to answer this question, right? So we'll discuss n behavior. R. So n behavior is what happens when x is a very large positive or negative value. Now, if you see the degree of numerator is 1 higher, right? So, degree of the numerator is x cubed and that of denominator is x squared, 1 higher. That means you expect oblique asymptote. Correct? Now, how to find the equation of this oblique asymptote? We can divide numerator by denominator and get the equation of oblique asymptote. Well, you can divide the given numerator and denominator, but since we have simplified, let us do with the simplified version. So what I'll do now is, 
I'm going to divide, let's do long division, okay, let's divide this numerator, let me first expand it, it gives me x square, x times x, right, plus 4x, and we are dividing that by x plus 2, right, so when we divide, let me complete it by writing 0 here, so we can multiply by x, so we get x square plus 2x, take away, so we get 2x, bring down 0, and then we can do times 2. So we have 2x plus 2, and the remainder is minus 2. So we could write our rational function, let me write f of x now here, as, that is the numerator part, x plus 2, plus the denominator part, minus 2, divided by x plus 2, correct? Okay. So, so that's how we can actually write. And we know our restriction says that x is not equal to plus minus 2. It's a good idea to write it in the very beginning. So that is how we can see our rational function. So it is, this x plus 2 represents a line plus minus 2 divided by x plus 2, right? So that x plus 2 is actually the equation of the oblique asymptote. Now let's graph the function and we'll understand the oblique asymptote in more details and then we'll fill in the end behavior. I hope you understand that part. Be, you know, better for us. So this, that is our coordinate plane. Okay, it's a very rough sketch. So what we analyzed is that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 2. So let's draw a vertical asymptote here. And we have a hole at x plus 2 somewhere, but we don't know where it is, correct? In the equation, you can always substitute 2 and find the position of the hole. So we can do that part also. What is the y value at that hole? If I write 2 here, what do I get? 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So the hole will be at... 2, 3. That's the position of the hole, okay? Right. And y-intercept is right at the origin for us. Now, once we get this oblique asymptote, which is x plus 2, it's a good idea to draw this line itself. So, 2 is my y-intercept, correct? And slope is 1, so that is how my oblique asymptote should look like. So this equation of the line is x plus 2. So that is my equation of the line y equals to x plus 2. Now what do we see here? You will notice that the rational function which we have written is x plus 2 plus minus 2 over this. So if x is positive, we have a negative value. So we have to take away something from the line. That means we are approaching this from the lower part. Do you see that? But in case we are approaching negative infinity, in that case, this becomes negative. Negative, negative is positive. So we are approaching from the upper half. Do you see that part? So that is the end behavior. But in any case, what is happening is when we are approaching infinity, y is also approaching infinity. And when we are approaching negative infinity, y is also approaching negative infinity, but it has an oblique asymptote. It is also approaching a line, y equals to x plus 2. So we can here write down as oblique asymptote, y equals to x plus 2. So it is approaching a line, y equals to x plus 2, right? Now, we have all the required things, we can really sketch it. So the function will look like, we are approaching this side, right? So we cannot cross the vertical asymptote. So the function will be kind of like this. Approaching the line. Do you see how I am approaching the lines? That is how it is approaching the line from this side. On the other hand, we have the x-intercept at 
x intercept we had written somewhere, right? So zeros that is zeros at x equals to zero and minus four. So minus four is here, right? So the other part will be kind of like this. Approaching the vertical asymptote from the right side and the oblique asymptote from the top. And this is our minus four as x intercept. Here the other x intercept at zero which is also the y intercept, right? So that is how, and we have to still write down where our hole is. So hole is at two, three. So at this location two, we have a hole. Let us say this is the hole, right? So here the location of the hole is two, three. So that is how you're going to sketch it. Let me write f of x here. So the rational function is having an oblique asymptote. The end behavior is approaches infinity when x approaches both infinities. When it approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. When x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. But since it approaches a line, we have an oblique asymptote, y equals to x plus 2, which we could see right from the equation since the numerator of this rational function is 1 greater than the denominator. Ellen, I hope this helps you to understand all the concepts of rational functions. Thanks again for such a beautiful question to share with. Thank you and all the best.